now sports. A big rivalry game right here on this field. That means just a little bit more than bragging rights. We'll have more coming up for you in sports. You see why this big guy right behind me is smiling? It's because he's seen me try and shoot this thing before. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Alex McCready here with Sports. You see those stands right behind me? There's not going to be an empty seat in this house come Friday night. Athens Academy and Prince Avenue Christian, two teams who have had great seasons, both fighting for home field advantage, a region championship, but both having to go through each other to do it. One more game. That's all Athens Academy has, not only to win the region encompassing most of Northeast Georgia's private schools, but also end a four-game losing streak to Prince Avenue Christian. It's a neat little rivalry, but you know, it's not really a rivalry until we make it a rivalry. Alexander says he thinks Athens Academy can make it a rivalry too. Coming off a disappointing first loss of the season, the Spartans are focused and looking ahead to Friday's marquee matchup. You know, I, you don't have to sit up here and give some great Lombardi speech to these guys, you know. As you can see, the Spartans are hard at work. They know it's on the line, their first region title since 2012. But only 20 minutes up the road, Prince Avenue Christian waiting for them with region title hopes of their own. Any kid, think about it, a kid that's a senior that graduates, he can have been a region champ his entire football career. But Coach Vandegrift wants his team to know just how important having a top seed in the playoffs is. If you win the region, it just sort of not guarantees you, but it sets you up to make it to about the third round. One thing is for certain, region title hopes plus crosstown rivalry equals a great recipe for a hard fought battle. Oh yeah, anytime it, it works out that way and it's fun for our community and our kids. I guess it's called the backyard brawl, so uh, a lot of people in the backyard. Fun, yes. A backyard brawl, most definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where else I would want to be on Friday night. The game kicks off right here at Prince Avenue Christian at 7.30 p.m. sharp. You know, I always wish I could do that, but I bet I know some guys who can. And for the next two days, they're calling Stegman Coliseum home. It's only 71 miles to Phillips Arena, but for the fourth year in a row, the Atlanta Hawks are on the University of Georgia campus for their training camp. Newcomer and Atlanta native Dwight Howard looks to help the Hawks make their 10th straight playoff appearance, the longest such streak in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, we love this facility. We love coming up to the University of Georgia. Um, it just, it fits us. It's, uh, it feels like the right place for us to start our season. At least I know how to dribble. That's your look at sports. I'm Alex McCready's. Alex, I think a lot of people are excited about the football team starting up again. Most definitely, yes. We are out there at Georgia football's new home at the Club Sports Complex. We saw a lot of familiar faces and a bunch of fresh ones too. But the most surprising face of all was the player coming back from a PCL tear only five months ago. You know him well, it's Nick Chubb. Chubb takes the handoff and hits the hole. For the last five months, this is what we have been waiting to see. But. At the beginning of the Kirby Smart era, this isn't even the biggest question. Georgia once again comes into spring practice without a clue who its starting quarterback will be. Grayson Lambert, Bryce Ramsey, and Jacob Eason were all out there battling for the starting spot. The were hustling downfield, the offensive linemen were blocking, and the defensive backs were on the prowl. The Georgia squad was in full force. It's 170 days until Georgia tees it off between the hedges. But for those of you that can't wait, G-Day is just on the horizon. April 16th is fast approaching. I know I'm counting down. Hey guys, Alexander Team McCready's for the Red and Black here. I'm here with Rachel Schick. Have you ever wondered what goes through the mind of a gymnast during her routine? Well, Rachel is going to take us through her bars routine that she ha did last Friday against Arkansas. And uh, just kind of go through what, what you're thinking about each point. Yeah, kind of get in the head of an athlete and in the head of a gymnast. So you're going to do this? Yeah. All right, ready. So, when you start spinning around, literally doing flips, yeah. are your eyes closed or your eyes open? Um, both. So, <laughs> when I'm going down for the giant, my eyes are open and I see the floor. Okay. And then I guess I blink because I don't see anything. And then I see the floor again. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm going into my dismount, though, I do have my eyes open and I can like see my toes rise. And then they close, apparently, because then all of a sudden I see the landing. <laughs> So when I'm in the air, like they're closed, and I actually I feel the air pretty much like air awareness, oh, and cool. I know where I am in the air, which is pretty cool. It's unique. Okay. Like, I don't think many athletes can say that they have air awareness. This is the 40-mile stretch of road separating Billy O'Hare from the game he loves. The journey down this road leads to one place, 
UGA's intramural sports fields. Three days a week, you find Coach O'Hare passing along his words to a bunch of college kids who have decided to play his favorite sport. As I got here and realized the amount of talent these kids had and the dedication, um, I was hooked. O'Hare travels over an hour and a half from his home in Gwinnett County just to coach. He's willing to drive from Atlanta when the rest of us get are sometimes late to practice driving from the other side of campus. When O'Hare is not on a lacrosse field, he is protecting the streets of Forsyth County as a member of its narcotics and gang unit. When he isn't on patrol, though, he is studying film on opponents to prepare the team for its upcoming games. He's 100% he's all in. He's got, you know, he's got a full-time job that it takes up his entire day, and he still puts in every other second, every free second that he gets, he puts into this team. O'Hare joined the team three years ago and has brought a new brand of discipline that he says not only makes the team better on the field, but makes them better men off it. He also brings an attitude of, uh, of discipline and hard work that we all really seem to feed off of and work well with, and I think that's paid dividends this season. I take offense when people say, oh, you're a club team. That I get boiled up inside. I don't want people to reference that at all because there's not one person that I've coached in the past, th going on my third season, that truly thought this was a club team and stayed on the team. O'Hare wouldn't trade this team for any other. Alex McCready's Grady News Source.